Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing four budget-friendly crock-pot dinners that all came out super delicious. I am always on the lookout for new crock-pot recipes to add to our list of favorites. So I'm excited to share these and I hope y'all enjoy. First up, I'm gonna be making chicken pot pie. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all that this is the best crock pot version of chicken pot pie that I have ever came across. It is our number one favorite recipe out of this whole video. So I started by laying down some boneless skinless chicken thighs in the bottom of my crock pot. The recipe calls for chicken breast, but I really like dark meat in a chicken pot pie and they cook amazingly in a crock pot. I added a half a cup of chicken broth on top of the chicken and then I'm just going in and seasoning that chicken with salt, pepper, onion powder, and I did a quarter teaspoon each of dried rosemary and dried thyme. I'm also going to go in with two cans of some cream of chicken soup. I'm just taking a small little spatula and getting all of that dumped out, and I'm just going to take the back of it and just kind of smooth it out all over the top of the chicken. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab three Yukon Gold potatoes. These are about medium-sized potatoes. I washed them well, chopped them into small little bite-sized pieces and threw them on in there, skin and all. I originally thought that was gonna be too many potatoes for this, but I ended up loving the ratio in the end. I did a big spoonful of minced garlic and just a normal size bag of frozen mixed vegetables. I'm gonna get my lid added on and I let that cook on high for about four hours. So when that's about done, you want to make your biscuits. Now you can do canned biscuits, frozen biscuits, whatever you want to. I was in the mood to make some homemade biscuits. So I'm gonna go ahead and include that recipe as well, even though it's not technically a crock pot recipe, but I just do two cups of self-rising flour, one stick of salted cold butter that I cut into cubes, and then I just throw it into my flour and work it in with a fork in my hands just until it's all nice and crumbly then I add in one cup of whole buttermilk and as you can see I'm just taking my fork and I'm just mixing that buttermilk into that flour just until it is, it is combined you don't want to overwork it because I'm going to continue working with it on the counter so here I am just getting my work surface ready I just have a hot soapy rag I just use a little bit of Dawn and of course I'm going to go in and dry that off with a paper towel now if you watch my older videos I used to never work with anything like straight on my counter tops but I've been doing that recently and it has been such a game changer because it is so much easier to work with a dough straight on your countertop because it's not going to move around like it would versus anything else. Back then I just used to think you know if I'm using disinfectant sprays on my countertops there's no way that I can let food touch it but if Dawn is good enough to clean dishes then it should be good enough to clean my counter so I'm glad I finally got that through my head but anyways I just added a little bit more flour to the countertop so that nothing will stick. I put plenty of that flour on my hands and I'm just going in and kneading this and folding this. The folding is what's going to create those nice layers that you want in a biscuit. I don't know what happened to the footage of me rolling this out with my rolling pin, but I just rolled it out a little bit. You don't want to roll it out too thin, so I just barely rolled it and I'm just going in with a biscuit cutter and forming it into biscuits. I've always heard to not twist your biscuit cutters, so I try not to do that. But I just placed that on a silicone baking mat on a cookie sheet and baked it at 450 for about 12 minutes. So while those are cooking in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the pot pie filling. I was originally going to take the chicken thighs out and put them on that plate over there to the left and shred them that way, but they were falling apart with such ease that wasn't even necessary to do. So I'm just taking my two forks and I am shredding that chicken up. Up. It took very little time. Like I said before, chicken thighs just cook up so good in the crock pot. And then lastly, I'm just going to add in about a half a cup of some sour cream. I'm sure you could leave that out if you wanted to and it would still be good, but we love sour cream, so why not? So that is it for the pot pie filling. I think that this looks amazing. It made my kitchen smell amazing. It is everything that I would want in a chicken pot pie. And I also think that this will be good, like served over some rice if you didn't want to top it with a biscuit but this is my bowl and I did top it with a biscuit I also added a little bit of extra black pepper 
I can never get my biscuits to get like brown on top because I'm always afraid of like overcooking them and drying them out. But other than that, they are so good. And this meal was absolutely incredible. If you like chicken pot pie, I promise you need to try out this crock pot version. You're going to love it. This next one was definitely the second runner up. This is going to be a chicken Parmesan soup. We love chicken Parmesan and we love soup. So this recipe definitely caught my attention, but I was skeptical about it for some reason. So I just knew I had to give it a try. So I added two boneless skinless chicken breasts to the bottom of my crock pot, followed by a big spoonful of minced garlic, a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, and then just a normal size can of tomato sauce. I did a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper. The recipe calls for two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. I only did one because we aren't crazy when things have like a lot of Italian seasoning in it. And I really like that adjustment. I'm just taking that same measuring spoon and kind of mixing those spices down into the tomato sauce. And then you need four cups of chicken broth. I'm going to be using the Better Than Bouillon chicken base. I did add that to boiling water just so that it will dissolve better. And I threw that in those tomato cans just so that I can make sure I got every little bit of it out. I'm going to add my lid to the crock pot and I'm going to cook that on high for four hours. So here we are later on in the day. I checked my chicken with a meat thermometer and... It was good to go. So I'm just going to get that removed into a separate little mixing bowl. And just like the first recipe, I'm just going in with two forks and shredding that chicken up. And again, it just came apart so easily. Always a good sign. So into the crock pot, I'm going to do one cup of this shaved Parmesan cheese. You could definitely do shredded as well, just whatever you have. I was worried about that not melting correctly, but it melted just fine, thankfully. And I also am going to do a cup of heavy whipping cream, and I'm just going to give that a quick mix. And then I'm going to grab a box of rotini pasta, and I'm going to add in about half of that box, so about eight ounces of it. And I'm also going to go ahead and add back in that cooked shredded chicken. I'm going to give that a quick mix and then I will get that covered back up and I'm going to let that cook on high for 15 minutes to cook the pasta. So now over to my stovetop in a skillet, I'm going to melt down some of that garlic parmesan basil butter, or you could use regular butter, and I'm going to add a half a cup of some Italian style breadcrumbs, and we're just going to toast those Italian breadcrumbs up in that seasoned butter until it is golden brown until you're liking so that only took a few minutes i thought that this looked perfect and it smelled so good truly the perfect touch to this so here it is after that 15 minutes the pasta is cooked completely through and it is ready to be served now i've also always been not always the hugest fan of cooking pasta in a crock pot because it definitely gives it a different like texture it's not a bad texture it's just different so if that's not your thing, you may want to cook your pasta separately, but I honestly didn't mind it too much in this dish, and my kids and husband didn't complain at all. They all went crazy over this. As y'all seen, I did top our bows with the breadcrumbs and some shredded mozzarella cheese, and I served it with some garlic breadsticks. Definitely a new family favorite, and this recipe makes a ton. Honestly, a little bit too much for us, so if you need to feed a lot of people, this is the recipe, and it reheats really well. I really think think that this is worth giving a try. It's super good. Chili stuffed baked potatoes has been one of our favorite meals currently. I made it recently in one of Josh's lunchbox videos and we just had to have it again. So this time I'm going to be doing it all in the crock pot and I could be wrong, but I am pretty sure that I have never made baked potatoes in the crock pot. So I was really excited to try that out. I think it's such a great idea. So here I just have four russet potatoes. They are a good size. As you can see, I washed and scrubbed them well. I poked some holes in them. And then I just drizzled them with a little bit of olive oil, sprinkled on some sea salt or kosher salt, I believe it was. And I just massaged it in well with my hands. And then I'm just getting all those wrapped up tightly in the tin full. That way nothing will leak out as it's cooking and that way it can like properly steam. So I'm just going to get that lid added on and I am going to let these cook on high. And I ended up letting mine cook for about four and a half hours. So now I'm going to get started on the chili. Now this is not a chili that's going to win you an award. It's just a very simple basic chili. Its main purpose is just to top 
the baked potatoes, but we really like it. It's just a pound of ground beef browned up. I season it with garlic salt and onion powder and black pepper. And I just cook it until it's no longer pink. And then I'm going to get that transferred on over to my smaller crock pot. This is the smallest one I have. I tend to forget about it, but it was perfect for this. If you have a lot of grease, you'll definitely want to drain it. I'm adding in one can of tomato sauce as well as one can of chili beans. I really like the Bushes one. And I'm going to add in one packet of this McCormick mild chili seasoning. I also really like the Chilio seasoning in the yellow package if I can ever find it. Um, I also really like the Kinder's one. And just to think about it, I've really never had a bad chili seasoning. So just use whatever you can get your hands on, whatever you like. So I'm just going to give that a quick stir and then I'm going to add my lid on and I'm going to let this cook on low and I'm just going to let that cook for as long as it takes to finish off those baked potatoes. So there's both of my crock pots going. I can go on about my day and come home to one of our absolute favorites. So here I am testing the potato. As you can see, it was so tender. It was perfect. And then here is what that chili looks like. Not only is that good over baked potatoes, but you could also use it over hot dogs for like chili dogs. butter salt and pepper to the potatoes of course the chili and then lots of cheese and sour cream over the top this is comfort food at its finest we just love it so much and i'm really glad that i finally gave the crock pot baked potatoes a try i think that it is genius so good I love a good pork roast, so I really wanted to give this version a try. I started by making a quick little seasoning blend. It's got rosemary, oregano, thyme, sage, nutmeg, and black pepper. If you're interested in this recipe, it will be linked down below in my description box so that you can get the exact measurements for that. So to the bottom of my crock pot, I'm going to be adding in one can of cream of chicken soup and one can of cream of mushroom soup. I'm also going to grab this package of pork gravy mix and I'm just going to dump in that whole envelope of the dry mix and I'm also going to sprinkle in some onion powder because the original recipe does call for a whole onion to be sliced and added into the gravy so if you like that go for it I'm just using the powder I mix that up real good and then I'm going to grab my meat this is a pork shoulder Boston roast this is three pounds and as you can see I got it for just a little over seven dollars which is an awesome price it always comes with this thick layer of fat on the back so I like to go in and remove a good amount of it. I don't want to remove all of it, but I just don't want it to be so thick. And don't do like I'm doing and point that knife towards you. A lot can go wrong. Just don't do that. But after I got that discarded, I'm just going in with a paper towel and I'm patting that meat dry. And then I'm going to go in with that seasoning blend that I made up and I'm just going to sprinkle that all over the meat and I'm making sure to really massage it in there so that it will stick. And of course, I will get the back side and then I will just kind of roll around the meat so that the size can get whatever is left on the plate. So I'm just gonna get that transferred on over to that gravy mixture. And then I'm gonna add in some carrots. I prepped this the day before. This is just some carrots that I peeled and washed and I just cut them into large chunks. And I'm just placing that all around the pork roast. Now I'm gonna take my lid, add it on, and I'm gonna let this cook on low for about eight hours. So. Here we are at the end of the day and I'm just taking a slotted spoon and I'm getting those carrots out of that gravy and into a separate bowl because I plan on trying to remove the grease from that gravy so I have to get everything out of there. So I just wanted to show y'all how perfectly cooked these carrots turn out. They were so nice and fork tender and flavorful. And then next I'm just going to take that pork roast and remove that to a separate plate. You can just tell by the way it's picking up that it's just super tender. Always love that. So in one of my videos I mentioned how I was interested in getting a fat separator and a lot of you guys recommended it. So I did order it off of Amazon. That was my first time using it. So I just poured it in there, let it do its thing, and in the meantime I shredded up the pork. And as you can see that grease is kind of floating up towards the top and then you just remove the stopper and then I'm just kind of slowly drizzling it in. Now if I could go back 
I would keep the gravy separate instead of doing it this way only because I didn't like the appearance of it but I'll talk more about that in a second but as you can see all that grease is left in the bottom I can get rid of that and then here is the finished product so Although this tasted super good, absolutely love the flavors, so flavorful, and that meat was so tender. Right up my alley, I just did not like the way that it looked. It does not look appetizing. So like I said, I would definitely make this again. I would just present it differently next time. Like I said, I would leave the gravy to the side that, you know, everyone can drizzle it on their own individual plate, and I wouldn't shred the meat up so fine. I would just leave it in larger pieces, but Either way, we did enjoy the meal. Um, I served it with some homemade mashed potatoes, and that macaroni and cheese is just the Bob Evans kind that you microwave. We really like it, but that's all I got for y'all in today's video. I hope that there was at least one recipe in here that caught your attention and will hopefully help you with your meal planning, and I would love to hear in the comments, what is your, like favorite crock pot recipe. I love to hear it. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have the best weekend and I will see y'all real soon. Bye guys.